my channel. I'm doing another video on how I maintain my hair color because I feel like it's constantly changing. This video is probably going to be a little long, but I really think it'll be worth your while because this is the least expensive way that I have found to maintain my hair color and people are constantly asking me how I'm keeping my hair as pink as I am. So if you're down to watch a super long video again, from me about how to maintain your hair color, go ahead and keep on watching. I am going to be including how I bleach my roots today. And I do want to just say once again, I did go to cosmetology school, but I did not take the cosmetology program. So like take everything I do with my hair with a grain of salt. Uh, it's yeah, just, I think I know what I'm doing, but like, I'm not a professional. So like, don't just, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, so I will be showing you guys how I bleach my roots. My roots really aren't that bad, but I wanted to go ahead and do them so I could just totally show you guys how I do the whole shebang. So first I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the materials that you're going to need in order to maintain beautiful hair color. This hot look. Uh, so for bleaching, what you're definitely going to need is some developer with some bleach, which I need to go grab. So I'll be right back. This is the bleach that I currently use. Um, I usually always buy the big bucket because it's usually worth it for the price. I can't remember for the life of me how much I paid for this, but I want to say it was probably around $20, but I've had this, these things last me like almost a whole year because I don't really use it much at a time because I'm bleaching just the little bits of my roots. So, and then this, I only need 10 volume developer. I would really suggest only starting with 10 and then kind of going up from there because you could be over processing your hair and damaging your hair more than you need to in order to get the lift that you need to get the lightness of the of your hair <laughs> to be to be able to dye it the color that you want um, i use both of these and that's just this is i probably only use these maybe once every like two or three months it's not that often. Next, what you're going to need is the hair color that you want. Now, this is um, a relatively new product that I've been using. I picked this up at Sally's and I got it for $5.99. And I, let me just say, I used to be the person who would grab the exact color that I would want off the shelf. And like, let's say I was trying to do like a pastel pink and I would grab pastel pink and I'd be so frustrated that it would take me like I don't know, seven tubes to uh, fully dye my hair. Granted, my hair was like down to here, but still like seven tubes is a lot. And if you're spending $6 on each tube, I mean, that's already what, over $40. And so that can get expensive. This is how I found to make it a lot less expensive is if you buy the deepest color of what you're trying to get. So for me, I get fuchsia and it's like a really, really, the most pigmented one because essentially I'm going to be diluting it with the cheapest concealer of all life. This was literally $2 at the grocery store. Um, I'm not do using it to um, condition my hair per se. I'm using it as a diluter to this because this is a semi-permanent color and you don't need a developer for it. So you're not damaging your hair as much when you're doing this. Now that's all the products that you need. You are going to need some tools in order to do all of this. So I use a mixing bowl that I got at Sally's and also a matching brush because are you surprised it's pink? Oh, come on. <laughs> and then I also recommend grabbing um, their little whisk to use. I mean, this is like exactly what I use it for is just to mix up hair color. I don't use it for anything else. So I suggest you do the same. And then I also suggest using like some really old Tupperware because essentially what we're going to be doing today is mixing all of the color at once and just keeping it in a closed container and then keeping it wherever you keep all your bath stuff, which I keep mine, you know, hidden away. I feel like it looks kind of janky, but who cares? So just some old Tupperware and that definitely has a lid because you don't want to like risk it falling over and like you losing all your product because that would just defeat this whole purpose. I would also really suggest getting some paper towels before you start this whole process. You also need to be wearing clothes that you do not care about. So this is my hair dyeing shirt. This is, I always wear this whenever I color bleach whatever to my hair. Uh, it's really an old work shirt. 
Um, you need to have a hairbrush because it's gonna make your life a lot easier to put color and stuff in your hair if your hair is already brushed. That's pretty much it. Oh, no, it's not. You need gloves. You definitely need some gloves. I have a big box of nitrile gloves that I ended up purchasing for my state word kit from school. So um, they have a lot of reusable gloves, but you just need to wear something to protect your hands so you don't get bleach on your hands and also you don't get any hair color on your hands because it's very likely that it's going to stain. So I am going to begin by bleaching my roots. And so first, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put my gloves on just to go ahead and get ready. And then I'm gonna go ahead and brush all my hair. Now you'll probably want to follow the instructions for what it says to do as far as bleaching your hair. I've done this so many times, um, but typically, well, this is what they told me. I heard from a hair stylist, I'm guessing she was, worked at Sally's. You basically want to make the developer and the bleach mix the consistency of toothpaste. So I, I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and do three scoops. Maybe, yeah, three scoops. So three scoops, that's really the only thing I measure out. The developer, I just kind of eyeball it and kind of, I put some in, I pour some in and mix it, see how it looks as far as the consistency. And if I need to add more developer, I will. See. I can already tell I need to add more developer. I'm using that whisk, obviously, to mix it all up. So that way it's a very smooth consistency and it's all mixed together. Okay, I think that's actually pretty good. That's usually about how I do it. Depending on how much of your hair that you need to bleach is really just gonna depend on how much actual bleach you're gonna need. What I have may not look like a whole lot. It may look like too much. It just really is depending on how much of your hair you need to bleach. Okay, so when I first started bleaching my hair, I was starting at the bottom and then working my way to the top and I was using um, like hair clips for my hair. Well, I found that, so the bottom of my hair was getting super processed and cause I mean, granted I couldn't really see it and a lot of it was breaking off on the bottom here like at the nape of the neck and um, like the top was like not getting as bleached as I want. So for me, the reason I started doing it this way is so I can actually see what's getting processed here. And this is the part most people are going to see anyway, because to be completely honest, I don't really wear my hair in a bun or whatever, have my hair up very much. So having it not be super processed down here or to the right lightness that I need it to be, it just, it's not a big deal to me. So I care more about what's going on up here so I'm going to start up here. This, I just get like the littlest amount and you only really wanna get where the new growth is. You don't wanna go uh, overlapping where your already processed hair is because that could cause breakage. I am going to do a time lapse of me doing my whole head so that way you guys don't have to sit through this whole process. But I just want you guys to know that, you know, do this at your own risk. I know my hair is never perfect and I'm a-okay with that. I like, I just really like the way my, my hair turns out whenever I do it like this. And if there's patchiness, I don't care. <laughs> Other people may look at me and judge or whatever but I don't care okay so something I want to mention is you definitely want to watch your hair closely especially if this is your first time or first couple times bleaching your hair is you just want to make sure that once it's the color that you want then you wash it out you don't want to be like oh well I'm just gonna wait an extra like 10 minutes like no because bleaching is essentially breaking down 
proteins in your hair and stuff like that. So you just want to watch it very closely. I, I mean, I just got finished doing the rest of my head and you can see that this is already getting to the color that it needs to be. And, uh, my hair is naturally like a medium dark blonde, um, with like red undertones in it. So like a strawberry dirty blonde. And so if you're anywhere near my hair color, I would definitely recommend only doing about 20 minutes with the 10 developer. Otherwise you're just going to be damaging your hair way too much. So, so, um, I made sure to do a lot of little sections and went all around my hairline and I did my best to do the back. I don't try to get too crazy with it because if it's messed up, it's messed up. I don't care. Do whatever you want as far as like doing uh, what you need in order to get the back covered. But I feel like I did the best I could and that's okay. Uh, so I am going to go listen to a couple podcasts and I will be back here in a little bit so we can check out my hair and then I'll jump in the shower. So while I'm sitting here waiting, I realize I should probably tell you guys this instead of listening to podcasts. Um, I definitely recommend saving whatever bleach you did not use uh, in the bowl until you were like completely done coloring your hair like in all its entirety because I have found that sometimes when I throw it out or wash it wash it away I find that I still need some bleach uh, for whatever reason um, a lot of times like ugh, this is probably gonna sound awful but I do get hair color sometimes on my sink and um, bleach is honestly the only thing that gets it out so sometimes like I'll like depending on what kind of countertops you have be careful with this but I'll put some bleach on it and then wipe it away after a little bit and it's gone so you know it makes me not feel so bad about getting hair color on the sink you should still like wipe it up if when you see it definitely to prevent major staining but just don't throw your bleach away is basically all I'm trying to say is so just hang on to it for a little bit. Okay, so it has been about 15 minutes. So my hair looks like. This side looks like pretty much ready to go because this is the side that I did first. And so I'm gonna wait just like a, <laughs> a couple more minutes on this side but I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the shower after this and I'm going to use uh, deep conditioning stuff all over my hair when I wash the bleach out because bleach is so incredibly drying to your hair so you always wanna like deep condition after you bleach it. Um, so I'm gonna do that and I'll be back after I wash my hair and then I'm gonna go ahead and dry my hair because you don't wanna apply the color that I'm about to do with wet hair because otherwise it's just gonna get diluted even more and it's inconsistent. That's basically it. <laughs> All right, well, I'll be back here in a little bit. All right, so I'm back. It's <laughs> my fabulous hair, um, freshly blow dried. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on mixing the color for the actual color. Um, so I actually have like the tiniest bit left over from what I made last time. Um, so but I'm just gonna go ahead and mix directly in this one. And I will say there, the one cool thing that I've been doing with my hair is having a lighter color on top and then a deeper color on the bottom. And I've only been doing this for a couple months so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do that as well. So that's why I do have, I do have two separate ones. Um, I was doing it a little differently uh, before, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna start doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix the lighter color um, in here. And once again, this is not a thing that I actually measure. This is all eyeballing. So I'm gonna use that $2 conditioner that I bought. So the only reason I picked this conditioner is because it's white. I didn't want it to affect like the color, the way that it looked in the actual bowl and then what it would look like on my hair. So that's why I picked that. So I'm just mixing like a ton. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave just a little bit of the conditioner in there. There's like a lot of the bottom that I, honestly I just can't get out. Um, but I'm going to leave that in there just in case I accidentally put too much of the actual color in with it. So if I wanna lighten it, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this Wella 
Color Charm paints and just pierce the top. And since I'm mixing two, I'm just going to do a little bit of each one, mix them, see how it looks, add more color, just kind of, that's how much color I put per how much conditioner, because I want to start out little, because remember, we got the highest pigment of the color that I wanted to mix with the conditioner. See, like, look, you can already see that it's pretty dark. Now, depending on what color you want, you may want to grab more than one color. So I have some orange that I like to add to this to give this more of like a peachy look instead of being just like straight hot pink. So I am going to add a little bit of orange to this once I get this fully mixed so I can see what the pink color looks like. Yeah, see, so you just put like the tiniest bit of orange in there. This is also why I like mixing like a bigger batch is so that way when you go to like touch up your color, it's the same exact color. Yep, that is definitely the vibe I am wanting for my hair color. Is this like, it's like a peachy, but mostly pink. It kind of looks like bubblegum pink, but it's not like stark. So this one is the one that I'm gonna be using for the bottom. I did put not quite as much conditioner and more of the pink color because this one is it's darker on the bottom of my hair um, so I may go ahead and make some more of this because I didn't really make a whole lot so like this pink tube will actually last me through I want to say at least two conditioners because of how little of it I use how little of the pink color but it really just depends on how much pigment you want in your hair. Okay, so that's this one so far. It's a little darker uh, than this one. You can see the difference, but I think I still wanna add a little bit more pink to this one. Okay, so now that you have all of your hair color mixed, grab a clean brush that doesn't have bleach on it. If you only have one brush, wash off the one that had bleach on it, but still leave the bleach in the bowl. And then get your hair color, and then we're just gonna start doing it like we did with the with the bleach. I'm only gonna put it on the parts where it's blonde, and then I'm gonna bring it down. Once I've gotten all of that, I'm gonna bring it down to um, probably about here, and then I'll come back. <laughs> except for like the ends here. And so basically what I'm gonna do is grab the other color and concentrate that here and then feather it in and kind of like mix it in with this to kind of give it that subtle ombre look. But I didn't put any conditioner on the ends here so this can fully absorb all of the other color, the darker one. So I'll go ahead and zoom you guys through that and then I'll be back. My hair is completely covered in conditioner and hair color. I am going to let it sit for 30 minutes. I know that sounds like probably a long time, but I feel like it just gets into your hair cuticles and whatever uh, a lot better the longer you let it the longer you let it sit in your hair, the more penetrated it's going to get, the more concentrated it's gonna be. So so yeah, that's, I mean, honestly, that's pretty much it. I thought this video was gonna be a lot longer than I think it actually ended up being, but yeah, this is pretty much it. I'm going to just rinse my hair, because this is conditioner, I'm just gonna rinse my hair when with water whenever I get in the shower, and um, just shampoo and condition your hair normal the way you would, but I don't really see the point if you already have like conditioner sitting in your hair for 30 minutes, your hair's gonna be so crazy soft. So I figured it might be a good idea to go ahead and tell you guys why I ended up started coloring my hair like this, 
and it was because I have another video on here where I was trying out overtone the rose gold overtone and I don't remember if I said or not but whenever I went to go order that uh, either like for the first time or when I was trying to reorder it the color that I wanted was like completely out of stock for weeks so that was a little frustrating and it was also very frustrating that I was spending like $23 on um, on this color depositing conditioner that really only lasted me maybe a month because I would be using it in my hair every few days just to like maintain the hair color. So um, one day I was watching this girl uh, that I follow on Instagram. She also has pink hair and this is exactly what she did. And I like could not believe like that I, I just couldn't believe that I hadn't thought of that before. This is basically the inexpensive way to you to do overtone it's just a color depositing conditioner you could use this in the shower yeah but i think it works best when you apply it to dry hair um based on my experience that i had with overtone um it just kind of i don't know it's a lot it's a lot less expensive so if you think uh if we're just talking about the color and the conditioner so the color was 5.99 and then the conditioner was two dollars so what Six plus two is eight. And let me show you guys how much color I have left. This is how much of the top color I have. And this is how much of the bottom color I have. So I still have like a ton left. Uh, that's definitely going to be lasting me a lot. Um, probably two months, maybe longer. I'll take it, $8 to have pink hair, it totally fits me. So, but like I was saying earlier, you could definitely do this with pretty much any color, just definitely buy the most concentrated color you can find. And whenever you do this, you can just touch up your color whenever you want, however, how often you want, and it's very customizable. So anyway, I just wanted to come on and share that real quick um why i'm no longer using overtone because honestly it's just crazy expensive for what it is when i can make something for eight dollars it's gonna last me a lot longer myself <laughs>
what I try to go for, but I usually end up with something a lot more dark than I want. And that's okay. I mean, I like really whatever. It's pink. It's fine. Um, but yeah, only like five minutes. All right, guys. So that's it for this video. Um, this is my hair all. I really just blew it out. I've been styling my hair a little differently, whatever. So thanks for watching this video. If you found this helpful, if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, leave comments below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.